Alright, today we're going to have some fun playing around with the perspective grid tool to make some 3D forms in Adobe Illustrator. And this is a really simple tool, but it's kind of, it's confusing at first. So we're going to go through it very simply. Uh, first of all, if you go into view and you go to the perspective grid, you can see that there are some different options. There's one point perspective, which has all of your forms going back to one vanishing point, one, that one point back in the distance. Uh, Two-point perspective, which, as you can guess, is your forms receding back to two different vanishing points. And then three-point perspective is kind of like two-point perspective on steroids. It's got one extra point that's either up really high or down really low, so it makes you feel like you've almost got vertigo, like you're looking down a deep chasm or you're looking up at some really, really tall skyscrapers. So usually we'll be working within one point or two point perspective on your perspective grid, but occasionally you might want to bump it up to that three point perspective. Today we're going to be working in two point perspective though. So I am going to show my grid here, or if you want to see your grid, you can go and just click on your perspective grid tool. If it's not the, um, the amount of points, the amount of vanishing points that you want, you can just go change that in the view option in your menu. Now, once you're in the perspective grid tool, you can make all kinds of adjustments. You can scale it up or down. You can take your horizon line and maybe you want to make that higher or lower. So you can play around with that as you want. And then um, once you have it the way you want, you can start applying your shapes to it. Because right now it's just a grid. There's no shape actually there. Now, within our perspective grid tool, we have this handy little navigator up here that will show you the different sides that you're working with. And they're all color coded. So you can see the bottom here, this bottom plane, the ground basically, or the top, is green. So currently we're clicked on green. If we wanted to go to the left hand side, we'd click on the left side and that would be blue the right side would be orange. So that just helps you as you're navigating through and working on different sides. Now to actually make a form, we're going to click on the side that we want to work on and then we're going to go to the rectangle tool. Uh, rectangle tool because we're working with a rectangular form. And we are just going to click and draw a shape. Now right now it doesn't look like we have drawn a shape because we don't currently have a fill. Um, if you draw in white, it will also not look like you've drawn a shape because your perspective grid will always be visible through um, whatever color you've drawn. So if you have a white background and, and you've drawn in white, you might think to yourself, wait a second, my shape hasn't shown up, but it's still there. It's just that you can see your perspective grid tool or two. <laughs> so if you ever want to check on that, you can take the perspective grid view off if you do a command shift I. So command shift I, command shift I. So you can kind of see what you're doing there. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip this color so that I have a nice clear shape here on the side of my form and you can see the perspective grid is still visible through that. So that's the simplest way of adding um, a side to your form is just using your shape tool and clicking on the side that you want to work on and then drawing that in. Now I drew it you know, to the exact uh, specifications of my grid, but I could have extended that further out. I could have made that a little bit thinner. That's completely up to you as you're drawing that shape. You don't have to align it perfectly to every part of your grid. So now I'm going to show you another option in drawing a form, and that's taking these flat things that you've already drawn and then applying them to the side of a form. And we do that by using the perspective selection tool. Now before I do that, I'm going to stay in my perspective grid tool and I'm going to select the side that I want to work on. I want to work on this right side, so I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to click on the perspective selection tool and that's in the perspective grid family of tools. So that will be in this, you'll have to click on your perspective grid and then choose that. And once I've chosen that, I'm going to click on this little brick wall that I've already drawn and I'm going to apply it to this side. Now, the one thing I would say, whatever you're drawing, make sure you group all of those things together and you can just select all of the paths in that one drawing and hit a command G to do that. And after you've done that, then you should be able to click here and apply whatever you drew to the side of your form. Now you can scale that within your form and like I said, you can even go out farther or a little bit narrower than your original perspective grid, so that's up to you. 
Maybe I'll go a little bit farther here. And here you can see, if I do a Command Shift I, you can see my brick wall, which is looking pretty good. Now I can also, I'm going to apply this window in here, you can layer different objects onto your perspective grid. So now you can see I have a window on here as well. That's looking pretty good. So I can duplicate those things out. I could do multiple windows in here if I wanted a line of windows. I could scale it, make it smaller or bigger. So it's kind of fun. So now the one thing that people don't use the perspective grid for, I think, quite enough is creating shadows though too. Because here we have a, if, we, if I go back to my perspective grid, if I choose the bottom, uh, the horizon here, the horizontal part to work on, um, typically, you know, that would be working on like the tops or the bottoms of um, objects. But if you think about it, 3D forms are, go are always going to have shadows because they've got light sources and they're going to have one side that's going to be a bit darker and casting a shadow. Um, so we can create a really simple cast shadow just by choosing our rectangle tool again. And I'm going to take the stroke off of this and go in and add a gradient to my rectangle tool. And because I've selected down here at the bottom, I can create a cast shadow from the edge of this building that's just extending out. Now, this corner to kind of corner gradient isn't working too well, so I'm going to go into my gradient tool and I'm going to draw a new gradient. Let me keep working on that until I can get it kind of the way I want here. Now you can kind of adjust these gradients if you want as you're going along. It's looking pretty good. And then if it gets too dramatic for you, after you've drawn your shadow, if you like the gradient itself, but it may just be a little overpowering, you can always go in and adjust the opacity as well. Oops, I wasn't actually selected on that. Let's do that. Okay. So Command-Shift-I to see how that's looking. Um, it's not looking amazing, but, uh, but it is starting to look kind of like a building. So you can imagine if you were to go in and really work on creating some different textures and some different drawings, there's no limit to what you can do with a perspective grid. So as you're going in and experimenting, try you know drawing some flat surfaces first and then taking them into your perspective grid and seeing what you can do with them. And uh, have fun. Enjoy.